the way I'm going to set up this tutorial is we're starting with a couple of slides that just introduce how things are going. And then I'm going to show you um, the way I set up a couple of campaigns over my shoulder, just so you see where the insights are. And then if you have any questions at the end, more than happy to, to go over them. So let's start with how to use Linkio. It started as a pretty simple idea. You, you have a page, you're building links to that page. And as you build links, you need to use certain anchor text. And then Linkio would give you those anchor text suggestions. But as we started building the thing, we realized that well, we've got to automatically give you the data. And how do we figure out you know, links that are coming from the same domain? And there's anchor text. And we don't want you manually categorizing it. So we created a, an algorithm to categorize it for you. And then oftentimes, the backlink data you get is in, invalid or no longer accurate. So we have a crawler that actually periodically checks the links. And then we make sure that it's indexed in Google. And then you know, if you want to build certain anchor text, well, then how are your competitors? How do, how do their anchor text profiles look? So we added that uh, competitor functionality. And then if you start breaking down your website, into different types of pages. There's tons of different page types, and there's lots of customizations, and how many links do you need to build, and what order of the anchor text should you build to make it look natural. It became pretty complicated in the back end, but our goal is to simplify the front end. So you add a page, you add your competitors, you add your keywords, and then Linkio does what it does in the background, and then you come up with a, an airtight game plan for the anchor text that you should be building. So that was the idea. And we've gotten really, really close to, to bringing that to reality. And I'll, I'll give you an example of why any of this even matters. Here's, a, here's an Ahrefs graph of the link building that we've been doing for Linkio over the past year. Um, it's, it's basically just a one year anniversary. And we've been building links aggressively over the past year getting all the way up to 400 referring domains, and we're going to keep going. But if you look at Ahrefs traffic indicator over that same time period, we're building links, building links, building links. And then the way Ahrefs sees our traffic is spikes, it goes down, it stays flat. So there's, there's a disconnect between the number of links we're building and then how Google decides to reward us in the short term. So if you're building links and you're not sure how to do it, you can get yourself into trouble. And this could just be your plateau forever. However, if you're doing things right and naturally and the anchor text profile looks clean, you know, eventually that record that reward starts coming in. And then finally, after a year of link building, you know, we're, we're starting to see those those spikes coming in traffic. And as we add more articles, those articles will rank. So this work that we did here is going to start fueling the growth for the next year. And because the anchor text profiles ratios, they look natural, we don't have to worry about the links having an ill effect on our traffic. So that's one of the prime reasons why keeping an eye on your anchor text is so important. So for the next couple of slides, um, there's only a handful. I just want to show you how the system works and and how kind of the fields that we have in the system tie together with each other. Because I, I, I've talked to a lot of users and, and they're just a little unsure about the customizations or how to set up certain things. So as I go through this, it'll, it'll, I think it'll make a lot more sense. So for every backlink, there's an anchor text. We've broken down uh, that anchor text into five main categories. So it can, the anchor text can contain your brand, your keywords, uh, a mixture of both or it can contain all or part of your URL string, or it's none of the above. And we consider that, that just natural. So there's subtypes as well. You can have two different types of branded signatures, for example, your actual brand name, or just your website name.com. Um, a keyword anchor text can be your entire keyword, or you know one part of your keyword, your keyword plus other words, and then Sometimes people link to your articles using your title tag. Okay. Sometimes they link to your article with the keyword and your brand within the anchor text. Uh, certain directories and certain websites will link to your website using your URL. Whether it's a homepage or an inner page, it, it still shows up. 
Or sometimes they'll just say things like this guide, this page, or they'll link to you with an image link. Um, and it, it used to be pretty easy to just kind of optimize for all this stuff and, and start to rank. But you notice if you if you analyze competitors, you, you'll start to see certain patterns in the way their percentages are, are, are looking for a specific page based on the following factors. It's like you start noticing similarities when you understand the different types of domains there can be. Uh, similarities when you start understanding the different types of pages on a website. And then when you combine those two factors, the different pages that you can you can optimize your anchor text for. So first of all, the three types of websites. And what we're talking about here is how your root domain, like the, the word website name.com, the root domain, how it relates to your keyword. An exact match domain is when your root domain is your exact keyword. For example, uh, Linkio's main keyword is SEO tools. Therefore, my exact match domain, if I was to own this site, would be seotools.com. Um, my, my brand name is Linkio. It's linkio.com. I call this a non-match domain because there's no keyword inside of the, the root domain. And then a partial match is when the root domain contains all or part of the keyword plus additional words. So if my main keyword was SEO tools, a partial, partial match might be besttools.com. It might just be part of the word tools.com or the entire keyword plus additional words, like my favorite SEO tools.com. If, if you're adding something like the in front of the keyword, and that's it, the SEO tools.com. Uh, I think it can go either way. Honestly, I just go with exact match domain and it works for me just fine. So think about your own website or your client's websites. They're gonna fit into one of these three categories. Now, this slide is true for any page on the web. You have a home page. That's the main page of your site. Um, whether it's whether you choose to build your site on a www or not, whether you chose to build your site on a subdomain that contains another word or not, that would be your home page. A commercial page is where you're selling products or services directly from that page. Like on my Linkio website, I have um, I have a URL for linkio.com backslash manage backlinks. It's just a list of my the six features that are on Linkio and you know it's it's short to the point it's very commercial in nature if you're a lawyer and you're talking about your you know your personal injury service in Houston and you've got a bobslawfirm.com backslash Houston law well that's a commercial page for Houston and then if you're an e-commerce site and you're selling um, you know plant seeds and you have uh, just justseeds.com backslash um, rattlesnake plants needs then seeds then that's a commercial page as well and then a content page is basically uh, just about everything else where the, your blog content your big definitive resource guides if you're giving away a free tool uh, with some content on it that could be considered content um, this is if you look at my site, for example, I have an SEO tools breakdown. I've got an SEO tutorial breakdown. They're each five, six, 7,000 words. And I would consider that content. So if you think about your website, it probably most of the pages probably break down into one of these three categories. And then we could, let's just take these first two slides. We've got a combination of EMDs, PMDs, NMDs. We've got three page types here. And all of a sudden we can combine these and we have lots of options for home pages. We can have a home page that has no keyword in the domain. We've got a home page that's just a partial match, a home page that's an exact match. And then if we break it down at the local level, we've got the same kind of things. And then um, we have a like an exact match domain where the brand name is, is something else. Like if you had plumberinnj.com, but your brand name was you know, Bob and Sally's, well then that's where the brand name is not a keyword. However, if you're using the keyword as also the brand name, that's a, a different kind of setting. 
And the reason why I'm breaking these down is I, I spent uh, several weeks doing research on the anchor text profiles associated with each one of these different types of pages. And what I actually found is that uh, there's a lot of similarities when you start looking at several national home pages, home pages of, of websites that have no keyword in the domain. And if you look at several websites that are just a partial match, you actually see some similarities between their percentages. So what I ended up doing to Linkio is that I calculated the ideal percentages for each one of these page types, and I added them as defaults into the system, which I'll show you in a second. And there's also certain ideal percentages for an e-commerce product page, uh, a features page, like the one that's on my Linkio site. If you're providing a national service, there's a certain type of anchor text percentage to shoot for, local businesses as well. And even content, you see it has a certain type of percentage signature. And when, I, when I'm, the, some of these pages, they're, they're more keyword skewed, some of them are more brand skewed, some of them are more URL skewed. And when you start understanding the different pages on your website, the types of links you should be building to each page, and you actually scale that up and execute on the link building strategy, um, keeping this kind of stuff in mind, is, it keeps you safe. Uh, and a lot of times people just, they just go straight to the keyword anchor text, or they're just kind of spraying and praying, and it doesn't make any sense. And sometimes it works, okay? Uh, but oftentimes it, it does more harm than good. So for the next uh, few minutes, let me show you an example of how this setup actually works in real life. So uh, this is my demo account for Linkio. I'm going to, I added three different types of brands here. I'm gonna show you one for Linkio first. And in the interest of saving time, I just I just went ahead and, and did these earlier. So the crawls are done and the analysis is done. Why don't we start with the SEO tutorial uh, page? If we were to Google this term, look at where SEO tutorial currently ranks for Linkio, I think we're like we're top five. Last time I checked. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're top six. Now, let's say this was a, an important page for me and I wanted to keep building links until I can get the top spot because currently in the past seven days, I've gotten 11 clicks. There's pretty good impressions and I wanna, I wanna capture more space, okay? So what I ended up doing is I added this page into Linkio and I, I paired my Ahrefs account. So once I added this page, all of the backlinks from Ahrefs got imported and then a crawler went through and it validated that these were actual links. And some of these it marked as not indexed, like this one. Some of this, some of these it marked as not found. So it, some, it validated some of Ahrefs data. And overall it found that there's 12 referring domains that count. So recently we launched our competitors module. And here we can actually add competitors who are already ranking for this specific keyword. So the way I typically do this is I will, I'll do a Google search. Okay, I have the, uh, the Ahrefs Chrome plugin here and Basically, I just activate it. And sometimes Ahrefs kicks me out, so I may need to sign back in. No, I'm good. So what the tool did, it basically identified all of the metrics for whatever is ranking here on page one. I'm gonna go ahead and just export these to a CSV file. When I'm thinking about adding competitors into Linkio, I wanna, I wanna add competitors that actually provide me some kind of value in terms of their backlink data. So I wanna look for competitors who actually have links going to these specific pages. So hoboweb.com, it has 500 referring domains going to that page. Great, I'm gonna add them. 
Uh, tutorial point SEO is 14, 21, 96, 19, 17. Okay. A lot of these have a decent amount of links going to their pages. So why not add them? And that's exactly what I did. I added the competitor, page URL, their brand name, uh, the keywords here, the home page. A lot of this is going to be auto populated in our next uh, iteration. But for now, you can just fill these out. And I did that for several of them. And what starts happening in the background here is here's the, here's the competitors that I added. And Linkio is basically just crawling through each one of these links. Uh, it's checking to see if they're indexed or not. The ones that are indexed, it'll add. The ones that are indexed and do follow, it adds them to this metric here. All right, so for Hobo Web, uh, they had 269 live referring domains. Ahrefs gave us like, gave us like 500. Linkio validated about half of them as being accurate, and then half of that as actually counting towards the percentages. So we're getting a clear indication of well, it's not 500 referring domains that we're dealing with. It's actually a much more manageable number of 145. And then we see the rest for the competitors. Some of these, they have percentages that are so, they have, they have like referring domains that are so small, it's not even worth counting. Um, and when I say counting, I'm talking about using this competitor data to set goals for your own backlink profile. So if we take the averages of these competitors, right now we're seeing that the keyword anchor type is 51% for this specific page. We could drill it down to, to what the exact is, what the partial is, but let's keep it simple. Uh, we're seeing that the brand signatures are relatively low, and a lot of it is natural, a lot of it is URL, but uh, uh, over over half, is keyword based. Now, is this data accurate? Is this, are these the percentages that you should be shooting for? Uh, one of the checks that I always do is I wanna make sure that if something is excludable from the averages, these check boxes should be marked. And the way I exclude something from the averages is I wanna make sure that there's enough data to actually consider it includable. So what is SEO only has three referring domains that count. That's not enough to get any insights. So I'm just gonna mark that as exclude. Um, agency analytics, in this case, you know, sometimes six is okay, sometimes eight is okay, but because I have competitors who have like 145 and 69, um, I, don't, I don't need to really look at these, these low, low referring domain percentages and expect to get insights from them. So I'm going to unmark those. And maybe I'll leave in tutorial point for now, but let's see how this impacted our averages. So the keyword anchor text percentage stays stays pretty pretty similar. It was at 51% before, now it's at 49%. All right. And then so what we're seeing there is even whether it's low referring domains or high referring domains, these are kind of the averages. And then this number here, this is what uh, the Linkio system had set as a default. This was just based on, this was based on the content page ideal anchor text ratio, right? This is an SEO tutorial page. It's a long form guide. Therefore we shoot for the content page ideal percentages. So this was the preset in Linkio, 43% uh, versus what the actual competitor averages are of 49. And then, uh, here and there a little bit higher, a little bit lower. So what I would do in a case like this is because I have data and because I think that data is valuable, I would set these averages as the new ideal. And right now there's no easy way to do that, but in development, there's a dropdown that's gonna be right here where you can decide where your ideal is, is gonna be calculated from. If you wanted to just change it, or add a new ideal based on that data that you saw in the current in the current place. This is where you do it. Scroll to the bottom, add new item, add the new percentages, save it, and you're good to go. And this is also where you can experiment with different types of ideal percentages. You notice the a lot of the page types I covered in the webinar 
are listed here. And when you add a new page, you're selecting the page type. So the page type and the ideal percentage targets are actually linked. So depending on your page type, we, we figure out which ideal would make the most sense. And sometimes you might want to tweak it, like if it's a home page that has a PMD, um, just you want to go in here and just mark that so you know that it's accurate. So that's one of the values you can get is knowing what ideal percentages to shoot for. The next value that you can get is knowing how many links you should be trying to build. So if we go back to the Analyze Competitors tab, the next table is estimated number of links to build. Um, if, you, if you've used different tools, like different tools have different ways of calculating this number, and it really is just an estimate. Maybe you need more links, maybe you need less links, but this is kind of a nice way to get uh, a customized suggestion based on the competitor data that you feed the system. So we're taking into account not only the referring domains that are coming in to the pages, but we're also taking into account the overall domain authority of your competitors. So if your competitors have like a huge amount of homepage links and you have a small amount of homepage links, then just because they have six links to their SEO tutorial page doesn't mean you can beat them with just six links. Because your overall domain authority is much lower than theirs, if you really wanted to rank for this page, you need to build more links than they have. And the question becomes, how many more links? Linkio kind of helps you solve that. So if we look at the estimated overall target referring domains, Linkio set this one at 72. And then based on the existing number of links you have, Linkio is saying 61. So where did we get that number from? And why did I mark this as don't count towards the averages? So essentially what I'm looking for in competitors to use for this calculation is competitors who are like within striking distance of my authority. Um, and if they're higher or, or lower by, by certain magnitudes, that's okay. So for Linkio, I've got an overall referring domains to my homepage of 256 or about 250. So I ended up excluding people who just have way, way more authority than I do. Like Udemy uh, has 21,000 homepage referring domains. If I was to include them in the calculation, I'm going to end up with uh, a pending number of links to build of like 900 links, which obviously I don't need 900 links. This SEO tutorial page is already on page one, right? So it makes more sense to exclude this one. And I decided to exclude um, this one as well because they had 2,000 referring domains. And you just look at the other competitors, and all of these are on page one. They just they have links that are, especially homepage links, that are within striking distance for me. So that's what I'm looking at. And that gives me a target of 72. I'm going to build 61. And then at least I have an idea of what I should shoot for. And then once I switch over to the anchor tech suggestions, I can I can get suggestions on which of those what those anchor texts should be. So here's where people get a little lost right now with the UI, and it's going to get a little cleaner. But I'll show you what's so strange about this is here's eight suggestions from Linkio. A lot of people, they come to this page and they see zero suggestions. And the reason why they see zero suggestions is, you see our, our, our total referring domains goal is 20. And then we currently have 12 referring domains that count. Therefore, Linkio is calculating that um, if your goal is 20 and you already have 12, then you only need eight suggestions. So it gives you eight suggestions. Um, it's not that intuitive, so we're going to update that. But I think Linkio told me to build, what, like 61 links or something? So I changed that number to 61. And now in order to actually get these updates, I need to, to tell Linkio to refresh. And you can click away from the suggestions. You can click back to the suggestions. And now Linkio noticed that something changed in the calculations. So, it's telling you that something's being generated. So click here and load the update. So let's go ahead and click it. 
now we have all 61 suggestions. And we know what order of anchor text to, to go in based on where some of the biggest gaps are. Like we've got plenty of keyword anchor text, right? Not as much natural. Right now, that's probably the biggest gap in the profile. So Linkio is smart enough to say, OK, why don't you start with the just natural? Branded has a pretty big gap, too. So go there and then start cycling through the different anchors. So you're not building seven keyword anchor texts and 10 natural. And, and like it's a more natural kind of way of, of progressing through. And that's that's essentially how we go about setting up campaigns for a content page. Soon we'll have the actual anchor text suggestions to use. It's just one less thing to worry about. Um, let me give you one more or a couple more examples. But this time, since I kind of gave you the, the backgrounder in detail, we can go a little bit more quickly. So here's an Outreach Mama web page. And I'm going to give you an example of uh, a campaign where we actually screwed up on the anchor text percentages. And because of that, uh, this long form guide that I had worked so hard to build <laughs> about how to build quality backlinks actually lost some of its top rankings. So this backlinks guide was on page one of Google for keywords like how to build quality links. And then my team was building the links and one thing led to another. And somehow we ended up with a keyword percentage of 86% for almost 30 links. 86%. So I think right now, this this page has lost most of its traffic. I think how to build backlinks now is ranked on page three. Um, it still ranks for some long tests on page one, but nowhere nearly as good as it was doing. So let's say, okay, here's an example of a page that lost rankings. I want to put together a game plan for bringing those rankings back. How do I do that? Well, let's analyze the competitors and see how they stack up first. So ranked on page one was Gotch and Monitor Backlinks and Backlinko. These were the top three. And when we look at the averages of their percentages, we see the general average is 47%. Uh, Mine is currently at 86%. That's quite the delta. And then I don't have any branded. Um, there are some branded in the top ranking competitors profiles. It's lots of natural linker text, which I don't have. So that gives me kind of some insights here. How many links do I actually need to build here? Well, uh, Gotch is, is within striking distance of my authority. Monitor backlinks, um, I don't like their numbers because I prefer to have the, um, the root domain as the homepage metric here and not the not the subdomain. So I actually should have put in monitorbacklinks.com, not blog.monitorbacklinks.com as the homepage here. Um, and backlink go is just a massive authority site, 14,000 overall referring domains. So I don't even want to think about them. Uh, but if we look at Gotch's targets, he's got a ton of links. He's got a little less authority at home page anyway than we do and kind of average with the overall referring domains. So Linkio is saying, OK, why don't you, you can build about 34 more links, at least to compete in the same authority sphere as Gotch. And I say, OK, that's a good number. Let's use that. Let's go to our suggestions. Uh, there are no suggestions because you reached your goal. To see more, just increase your referring domains goal. So. I can do that. Um, why don't I update this to 60? Now I need to click off the tab, click back onto the tab. My suggestions are being generated now. So I can click to load the update. And then now we have the rest of the suggestions. And what do we see here? Very, very. I mean, so far I haven't seen any keyword anchor text at all in the next, at all, really, except a, maybe an exact keyword all the way down here. But you know, a lot of people have a knee-jerk reaction when they when they start losing rankings. They so just double down on their keyword anchor text. And 
Linkio kind of shows you that the top ranking websites, they don't have anchor text profile percentages like that. You need to have a rounded anchor text percentage profile because this is how people naturally link to your website. So if you're out there building links, whether it's black hat or gray hat or white hat, understanding what anchor text is next in line for you is an unfair advantage because you do it right. And then the activities that you're actually working towards, you're, you're carving out something that looks natural and eventually Google's gonna reward you for that. So that's one thing. And we also talked about a similar example here where Outreach Mama does a blogger outreach page. It's not ranking very well. So I, I added some top competitors and we see the percentages kind of break down 41%, 6%. So again, I have a game plan now and I can start putting together the pieces to actually go out there and execute. Uh, one final example is a local business. I, I, I have nothing to do with this particular company, it's just for an example, but I wanted to say, put together a game plan for ranking for PR agency in San Francisco. So that's my main keyword. Uh, public Haas, I think, was ranked on page two or page three. So I took the homepage, the local business homepage. I added it to the system. Overall, there were 40 links that were live, and only 11 of them were indexed and do follow. So, and if we look at the percentages, um, I marked this as a local homepage partial match domain. And then because the word agency was in there and my keyword is PR agency San Francisco. So I said it's a partial match. And these are the default percentages by Linkio. It's, it's pretty much in line with the defaults. It's not terrible. So the next step was, well, I want to customize these ideal percentages to actual competitors ranking on page one. So I did, I took, I looked for brands that were similar to, this might be a good exercise actually. I looked for brands that were similar in scope to the client that I wanted, AKA this was a small business and the homepage was targeted for ranking for that term. So A, does the keyword rank home pages? Uh, top four, top five results are massive pages. And then towards the bottom, uh, we have a handful of home pages that are ranking. Okay, and the rest are either massive sites or really, really high authority sites that made an inner page. But I added the home pages. So there's four brands here that showed up on, on page one of Google. Um, and as you import their data, you see that they, ha they have a good amount of backlinks on the home page that count. And then you take the averages, 35% branded, 7% keyword. You have some hybrid anchor text in here. Uh, compared to the averages, Linkio set it at 6% but actual real data for who's actually ranking on page one is at 18% for hybrid. So that's interesting. And then the authority of the competitors is not totally out of question. So um, Linkio estimates a target goal of 80, 69 pending links to the build, and then if you wanted to get those suggestions, again, we just go through the paces of, all right, let's mark this as 80. Let's refresh. And then we have our 80 suggestions ready to go. And there's a, a couple of resources here where, you know, you have that game plan and then how do you actually go out there and get links? Um, if you go to that outreachmama.com backslash uh, backlinks guide, it actually shows you, based on the anchor type, the best type of websites to get these links from. Like a naked URL kind of thing, it might be from directories. Uh, Keyword-based anchors, they might be from guest posting. Um, branded anchor text, they might be certain types of profile links or like, um, like listicle 
type things or daily roundups. So there's different ideas for you to actually go out, take the next step and get the links. And then if you're interested in guest posting, there's a, a huge resource of over a thousand guest posting sites that you can tap into. So that's kind of um, that's kind of an introduction to how to use Linkio and to gain value from the system. Uh, I'll hang out here for a couple minutes. If you have any questions on what I just covered, uh, if there's anything that seemed confusing, uh, feel free to, to use the chat window. And you can always reach out to us anytime via the chat the chat bot. If you're having trouble setting up a campaign, um, we're, we're usually available to, to jump in, um, check out your account with your permission, and, and see what's going on in the back end. The most value you can get from the Linkio toolset is definitely okay. I've got um, a couple minutes here, a couple questions. So looks like we're good. Yeah, replay is going to be available. Um, I'll put it on YouTube. I'll send it out to the email list. Uh, share it with your team. You know, check out a few of the principles and go from there. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. I appreciate you joining me.